These are the steps involved in solving an ETA or estimated time of arrival problem. And in all of these ETA problems, we use distance, speed, and time. And in the problem, speed is given, so we have that one, and they'll give us a time, right? They'll give us a start time. They'll give us a start time, and it will be a clock time, right? The first two digits are hours, and the second two are minutes. And this will come into play. So now we have distance, speed, and time. We need to find time. What do we need to find time? If we do our memory aid here, distance, speed, and time. To find time, it's, it's equal to distance divided by speed. So time is equal to distance divided by speed. Now we need to find our distance. In the problem, you'll be given the location of point A, where you're leaving from, and the location of point B, where you are going to arrive. Draw a line between those two, and then measure the distance of that line. So we measure the distance of that line, take it to the latitude scale, right? We have latitude and longitude, and each minute is a mile, so we can measure the distance of that line on our latitude scale. And if it's a long line, take it down. I usually use five nautical miles and then put it on the line and then walk it down and count. Five, 10, 15. So now we have a distance and we measured this distance. We measured the distance. So now we can divide this distance by our speed and get a time. And that time is going to be in hours only, right? You may get 1.89 hours. So we take this decimal part of the hours and times it by 60 and take it to minutes. And now we have this whole number of hours and this whole number of minutes and we can bring it over and we can add it to the time we left and get our estimated time of arrival. And again, if you want for more in-depth on ETA, watch practice problems on ETA 1, 2, and 3, and we do these problems the whole way through completely.